Nursing Review. And also we have the uh, Matus Nursing Review Online NCLEX Academy. So for tonight, join me again for another session on test taking and uh, on prioritization and delegation. So we have prepared some questions for you for tonight's uh, session. So you should understand that uh, delegation and prioritization of nursing care is a big chunk of your NCLEX examination. So it's really very important that you know how to answer these types of questions. But for tonight as well, uh, I'll be giving you a little bit of a uh, continued update of the uh, COVID situation and how it impacts our NCLEX uh, exam. Okay, so join me in the next few minutes. We'll be having some practice questions and then also review some of the principles that are really very important to remember when you're answering NCLEX uh, prioritization and delegation questions. Okay, so let's start the uh, first slide that we have for tonight. So the first thing that we're going to have for tonight is going to be um, the COVID-19 updates for NCLEX RN and NCLEX PN. So we have here the slide from the National Council for State Boards of Nursing. So they gave us permission to be able to uh, share this slide for everyone. And this is a very nice table that compares the different changes for the uh, NCLEX PN and the NCLEX RN examination. So we have the modified examination and then also for the NCLEX RN and also the NCLEX and Flex PN was going to happen. But before that, let's uh, recognize and acknowledge some of the people that we have here. Okay, so we have our enrolled student, we have Pratixia Patel. So hi, Pratixia, how are you? Thanks for joining us tonight in this uh, Facebook Live, and nice to see you. Uh, we also have, um, hmm, so we also have uh, Janelle. Hi, Janelle, nice to see you also for tonight. Thanks for joining us, that's a very nice picture. And then, hi. Maria, Ruella, how are you doing? So nice to see you as well for tonight. Okay, so hopefully we will have more people joining us in the next few moments. So for now, what we're going to do is to um, present to you a little bit about the update for the COVID for the NCLEX RN and PN. So, oh, we also have Manuska. She's also one of our students in the online NCLEX Academy. Hi, nice to meet you. And I like your mask. That's really very nice. Okay, right. Okay, so we have this uh, webinar that was uh, done, that was held by the NCSBN a few weeks ago, and they shared with us some of the changes for the NCLEX PN and NCLEX RN. And this is going to be until the next few months only, I think until uh, July 4. So in this uh, examination, what you have will be the, the modified exam. So meaning that in the next few weeks, what you're gonna have is, the, the length of the exam is going to be four hours. We used to have six hours and five hours for that, but now it's only four hours. And then also you have uh, one of the biggest changes will be that there's no longer experimental or pre-test questions. So instead of having the 15 and 25 questions, you don't have that anymore. Another one is the NCLEX or the next generation special research uh, section. So that one also has been taken out. So now um, you have zero questions on those uh, items. So no more experimental questions. And that's the reason why you have four hours. The maximum length of the exam will be 130 questions. So the RN supposedly is uh, to have 265 and the NCLEX PN is 205, but now it's only 130 questions. And the length of the exam, the minimum is going to be 60 questions instead of 75 and 85. One of the biggest questions that we have is that, um, is the exam going to be uh, more difficult or easy? That's the question. Is the exam going to be difficult or easier? So the NCSBN has said that there's not, there's no, there's no changes in the difficulty level of the examination. So remember that it's going to be the same passing standard. So there will be no changes. Okay. So before we proceed as well, we're going to have to uh, greet some other people who joined us tonight. So we have Mars. Mars to see you all. Nice to see you also. Hi. And um, we have another session for today. We have only like a few questions for tonight. But remember that in our program, 
Um, I have been doing some other events as well that you can join. So I have started for enrolled members. We have NCLEX uh, test taking practice sessions that we do um, uh, every now and then or regularly. So I have one scheduled, I guess, in April 29. Uh, There's going to be a Wednesday. It's a cardiovascular system NCLEX practice test session. And this is for all enrolled students. So I invite you all to join their practice session and it's going to be regular study ahead of time and then we'll be answering some questions okay so another one um so let's go ahead and discuss a few questions that we have uh, as much as possible i want to do this facebook live every week and the focus of this facebook live is always delegation and prioritization so if you really want to improve and master your delegation and prioritization skills follow this facebook live all the time and then also watch the videos on YouTube as well, because uh, uh, one of the biggest challenges that nurses have is the delegation and prioritization in the NCLEX. Okay, so let's have the first question for tonight. So this question is going to be about, I think this is a question about prioritization. So what I would like you to do is to read the question. Okay. So this is uh, a prioritization question. So question number one. So this is uh, number one. The unlicensed assisted personnel or UAP reports to the charge nurse in the medical surgical unit that the client who recently had a right hip replacement surgery has bright red blood coming out of the surgical site. Which of the following is the priority nursing action? So A, obtain the client's vital signs. B, elevate the client's legs to prevent shock. C, add more gauze dressing to the incision. So meaning that you want to reinforce the dressing. Or letter D, check the incision site for bleeding. Okay, so answer this question. The next time we do this Facebook Live in the next few weeks, we'll be having a contest. So whoever gets the uh, correct answers maybe is going to get something like my book, for example. So what do you think is the answer to this question? Okay, so is it A, B, C, or D? All right, so let's see. Let's give other people a chance <clears throat> what their answer is going to be. Okay, is it going to be A, B, C, or D? So let's dissect the question and let's have the answer. So some people said, okay, uh, okay. Oh, we have Manjinder Kaur. Hi, Manjinder. Nice to see you. Okay, she's one of our students in the online academy. Okay, so Hazel said letter D is the answer. That's our answer. So check the incision site. Okay, we have another one, Lai Lansang, also said letter D. So why do you think, guys, is letter D the answer? Okay, so in this question, why is letter D the answer? So this is a priority nursing action. And the most important thing is to remember that safety always comes first, okay? But before you can intervene, you wanna find out first, first what's going on. So in the NCLEX, remember that priority means it's either an assessment, the first thing that you have to do, or it's either you have to intervene right away, okay? So the answer to this question is going to be letter, okay? The answer is going to be letter, <laughs> yes, correct. That's going to be letter D, everyone. Okay, letter D is the answer. And check the incision site for bleeding. So you have to do an assessment first, find out what's going on with your patient. Uh, before you take the vital signs, you have to focus, uh, you have to do a focus assessment, which is looking at the, uh, the incision site if there's bleeding going on. And then maybe after that, you can check the vital signs and see how the patient is doing. Okay. Now, uh, there's one golden rule in the NCLEX that I want you to know. And this golden rule is this. If the client, if the client is in distress, do not assess. Okay? There's no need to do an assessment if you obviously see that your patient is in a dangerous situation. In that situation, you have to intervene first, alleviate the uh the problem or treat the problem, and then you can do further assessment after that. But the first thing you have to do if your client is obviously in distress is to intervene. In this situation, you don't intervene first because you don't really know if your patient is in distress, okay? You're going to the room, you're gonna check the incision site, and 
and there's not any other indication in the situation that the patient is in danger. So let me share um, share your thoughts. Okay, let me see what you think is the reason. Okay, so number one is assessment first. Okay, because uh, you don't have any idea of what's going on with this patient right now, so you want to assess first. And again, unless the patient is in a uh, serious situation, he's going to die in a few seconds or minute, and you really have to intervene. That's the one thing I really want you to remember in the NCLEX. Calling the physician may be a good answer in the NCLEX, but usually not the best answer. The NCLEX people want to find out if you're going to be a nurse who's going to um, do something first to the patient before you call the physician. So more likely, there's something to be done all the time before you call the physician. So uh, it's either assessing the patient, you get the information, or you intervene first, okay? So before you click that report to the physician or provider in the NCLEX, always remember that there should be nursing actions before that, okay? So the answer is going to be letter D. In this situation, letter D is the answer. But then if we change the situation, we're in, if you enter the room and the patient is having a hard time breathing, then letter D is not the answer anymore. If your patient is having severe shortness of breath when you enter the room, the first thing that you have to do is what? Of course, you have to prioritize the airway, okay? If you see that the patient is having severe or massive blood loss and appears hypovolemic, then you have to intervene first, okay? But in this situation, the answer is assess the patient first. Very good, okay? And also Pratiksa said, assess before implementing, and that's correct, yes, all right? So Mars said also to assess first as well. So very good, everybody, you get the right answer for that one, okay? So now let's go to the next question. So the next question is going to be another question about prioritization. And this is a very common situation in the NCLEX, wherein you have four patients, and then you have to figure out who's going to be the first patient that you're going to prioritize or to see, okay? So this is another prioritization question, okay? And the question focuses on four patients, okay? So let's see. So in this uh, question, the registered nurse in the medical surgical floor reviews the laboratory results on the following clients. So which client requires immediate nursing action? A, the client with renal failure who has a BUN of 45 and a serum creatinine level of two. B, the client is receiving filgrastim, neupogen, and has an increased granulocyte count, or WBC. C, the client on diuretic therapy who has a U-wave in the EKG strip, or D, the client who recently received glucagon, which is an injection, and has a blood sugar of 120 milligrams per deciliter. So be very careful with your answer on this one, everyone. Okay, so what do you think is the answer? Which patient comes first? Okay, which patient comes first in this situation? A, which patient? All right, so let's see. Some of the answers, okay, someone said letter C. Hazel said letter C. Why is letter C the answer, Hazel? Can you please let us know why your answer is letter C? What is letter C? Because you are correct, letter C is the answer, but why is C the answer in this situation? Okay, so the correct answer for this question is going to be letter C. Very good. Now, what is the strategy in answering this question in the NCLEX? What is the strategy for this? So we know that in this situation, according to my mind, in this situation, the problem is going to be hypokalemia. Very good. Hypokalemia. <laughs> okay, the strategy here in the NCLEX when you're given for patients is one of the pitfalls, and be very careful with this, is that when you're looking at the diagnosis of your patient, are the symptoms part of the condition, okay? Is it part of the condition? If it's part of the condition and it is expected, then it is not an emergency, okay? Unless you will say letter A. So letter A is the client with renal failure, of course, was a B on the 45 and creatinine of to 45 may be a little bit high, but then remember this patient is renal failure. 
especially if you say end stage renal disease, they usually really have increased BUN, of course. That's why they have renal failure, right? <laughs> Unless it's a change in the baseline, like for example, before was uh, 30 and now it is 60, then that's a drastic change from the baseline, then you can say letter A is an emergency because that is uh, a serious situation, something is going on. But with letter A, it doesn't say the baseline. So with letter A, maybe that's the answer, 45. But let's go through the other options first because in the end class, you're supposed to go through A, B, C, and D, correct? <laughs> okay, so let's go to letter B, the client who is receiving filgrastim uh, on Yelpigen and has increased granulocyte count. Remember that your granulocyte count, your filgrastim, it is a colony stimulating factor, okay? It is a medication that's being given to the patient to increase the WBC count, specifically the granulocyte. And this is a medication being given for patients with um, neutropenia. So, um, if you're seeing the granulocyte count is going up, then that is a sign that the medication is working. So letter B is okay. Unless you have a WBC that's high, more than 10,000, then usually that means infection is happening. But in this situation, you're giving filgrastim to increase the WBC of your patient. So if you're looking at the lab result, then you should expect that the patient will have an increase WBC or granulocyte. That's why letter B again, be careful. Receiving field grass stem and then increasing granulocyte, then that's what you expect as the effect of the medication. So letter B is not the answer, okay? Now letter D, the client who received glucagon with a blood sugar of 120. 120 is a little bit high, okay? Or it's normal, okay, or high. Um, but still, you have to remember that this patient received glucagon and glucagon is a medication that will increase the blood sugar of your patient and that is expected. Unless you have diabetic ketoacidosis or hyperglycemic, uh, hyperosmolar or non-ketotic coma or condition uh, wherein you have a uh, very high blood sugar, like let's say 500, then that's become, that becomes a, a, a big emergency. So we have to choose the, the best answer here. And that's why literacy is the answer because it's the presence of hypokalemia. It doesn't really say what's the critical level here, but the fact that hypokalemia is going on then, that needs to be uh, further assessed to find out uh, what's going on with the patient, especially the fact that the patient is receiving uh, a diuretic therapy, okay? So with a U-wave, U-wave means the presence of low potassium, so it is less than 3.5. So you have to look at that because the severe hypokalemia what is the effect of severe hypokalemia? Hypokalemia can lead to what? Okay. The danger of hypokalemia is going to be cardiac what? Cardiac, cardiac arrest. So that's why there is the answer. Okay. So let's have another question, everyone. So our next question is going to be about, now another one is prioritization again. So this is number three. Prioritization. So let's see if you can answer this question correctly, everyone. Okay. So the nurse is screening calls in the urgent care clinic. Which client should be instructed to come to the clinic immediately? A, the client with emphysema who has a pulse oximeter level of 90% only. Letter B, the client who took an antibiotic this morning and now reports rashes on the neck. C, the client with diabetes who is complaining of tingling and numbness on the legs. Or letter D, the client with psoriasis who reports itchy skin that started last night. So give me your answer, everyone. What do you think is the answer for this question? So again, this is another type of prioritization questions in the NCLEX and you're given again for four uh, conditions and you have to identify which one is unexpected, which one is sudden, which one is not part of the condition and therefore it is a priority, okay? So we have the answer of Hazel. Hazel says letter B, okay? We have Pratixa, also letter B. Okay, so RJ, RJ also says it's letter what? Letter B, 
Okay, so it seems like we have a good consensus on this question. Okay, Manuska is letter B. Manjinder is going to be letter B also. Very good. Okay. And why do you think is be the answer? We have Matthew. Matthew also said letter B. All right. Marella also said letter B. Okay. And then we also have, okay, Mars also said letter B. So a lot of you answered letter B, but what is the reason why letter B is the answer? So let's find out if that is the answer. Okay. All right. So the answer to this question is going to be letter B. Yes, very good. So letter B is the answer. So why is letter B the answer? Because it's a sign of what? What's going on here? Anaphylactic shock. Very good, Myra. So that's the answer. Anaphylactic shock and also said anaphylactic shock. Manuska also said anaphylactic shock. Very good. Um, rashes indicates the presence of allergy. And then when you say anaphylactic shock, the worst thing that can happen is a drop in the blood pressure because of massive uh, vasodilation because of histamine release. And having rashes indicates the presence of allergy, definitely. But why is A not the answer, wherein you have 90% pulse ox? Why? Because again, you have to look at the condition and then you have to look at the, the situation. So this patient is having emphysema and the pulse ox, which is 90, is usually expected in patients with emphysema. That is our goal. We cannot give high levels of oxygenation. So the 95% to 100% normal uh, oxygen saturation doesn't apply to COPD patients. Because we all know, going back to our concept, that patients with COPD are supposed to receive only somewhere 88 to 92% of um, a level of autosaturation, so 88 to 92, because they have hypoxic drive and we need to maintain a low level of oxygenation in these patients. Uh, letter C, somebody with diabetes complaining of tingling and numbness that indicates the presence of neuropathy. And that is um, expected in patients with what? In patients with diabetes, that they will have tingling and numbness. Unless it is something that started recently, and meaning it is something that is a new condition and that would be serious, right? Um, letter D, the client with psoriasis who reports itchy skin that started last night. Well, psoriasis is itchy skin. And although letter D is something that is new that happened, but remember that psoriasis is a condition that is characterized by remissions and exacerbation. We have to look at letter D. However, that itchy skin is a sign that the condition is uh, probably um, uh, exacerbating or starting over again a little bit. So. Uh, we have to look at letter D, but then again, each skin is part of psoriasis whenever there is an outbreak of or a flare up of the condition, okay? So letter, letter B is important, especially, of course, it says rashes, but what if we put there difficulty breathing? Then obviously that is the, the best answer, okay? All right, so let's go to the next question, everyone. All right, okay, so we have another question here and this is about prioritization, okay, prioritization. So obviously tonight, most of our questions are prioritization questions. So maybe next week we're gonna have some delegation questions, okay? So now uh, we have a particularly uh, common question that you may encounter, but let's find out if you know the answer to this question, okay? So, the nurse arrives at the scene of a traumatic car accident and notices that the passenger is unresponsive, has cool, clammy skin, and has lacerated wounds in the arms and chest. What is the priority in nursing action in this situation? A, stop the bleeding, B, assess the airway, C, immobilize the head and the neck, or D, move the client to a safe location. I hope you're learning something tonight. The most important thing tonight is knowing the principle of delegation or let's say prioritization, okay? For delegation, um, the one thing you have to remember is to always uh, delegate stable patients. Do not delegate unstable patients, okay? So for this one, uh, what's the answer? Is it A, stop the bleeding, B, assess the airway, C, immobilize the head and the neck, or D, move to a safe, move the client to a safe location? Okay, so what do you think is the answer for this one? OK, 
A. So Manuska answered letter B, which is assess the airway. Okay. Someone said, okay, Manuska again says A, B, C. All right. So we have Matteo also says um, letter B as well. Okay. Okay, so RJ is also letter B. Okay. Then we do have also Gem is also letter B. That's a very nice uh, family picture that you have there. Very nice. Okay. And then, of course, we have Marella also says letter B. So the answer to this question, maybe you're thinking that, oh, is this a trick question? Because I think that I think that I've seen this question before, and I think I have to be careful, you know, answering uh, airway over here, okay? But in this situation, to be honest with you, the answer is going to be really letter B, assess the airway. Uh, some some people said, or some nurses said that, you know what, airway is overused. You know, like in the NCLEX, they already know that you will answer airway, okay? But <clears throat> still, there will be questions in the NCLEX where an airway comes first, definitely. Okay, um, are, are the NCLEX people going to put questions in the NCLEX where in, you know, the answer is airway? We don't know. The, the bottom line is just always read the situation carefully and then answer the question as it is. Okay, if you have two urgent situations or emergent situations, airway always comes first. <laughs> Even if you have someone who's bleeding, airway comes first all the time. Okay, because it's airway, bleeding, uh, breathing, and circulation. Okay, so the nurse arrives in this situation. Are you going to stop the bleeding? No, you know that there's uh, there are uh, lacerated wounds in this patient. Okay, and of course, yes, you want to stop the bleeding, but again, you want to assess the airway because this is a car accident. You want to find out if there's any trouble, you know, uh, in the airway in the airway of your patient. Uh, letter C, immobilization. That's really very important as well, to immobilize the head and the neck to prevent further injury. And letter D is to move the client to a safe location. Moving the client to the to a safe location is what you call extrication, and we do that only when, when the situation is so dangerous, like the car is about to explode, then you have to move the client to a safe location. But in this situation, it doesn't indicate that uh, that the car is on fire or about to explode. So letter D is not the answer. So the answer is going to be letter B. So airway, assess the airway. Okay, so that's that always comes first. It would be hard to find in the NCLEX a patient having an airway problem and someone is having severe hypoglycemia and someone is having chest pain at the same time. That would be very hard to choose which one will you prioritize first, okay? Because chest pain is a priority. You cannot lose time with that one. Uh, hypoglycemia is a priority. Uh, what about strokes? Stroke, you cannot lose seconds as, as well in stroke. So uh, I think it would be very impossible to see those four things happening at the same time. An airway problem, a stroke patient, chest pain, and then at the same time, hypoglycemia. I don't think that's, that's gonna happen. Although in, actual clinical practice it's possible that you can have all of these things happening at the same time and you have to ask for help because because you need to make sure that you don't lose uh, seconds or minutes in dealing with these patients okay so manjinder said that airway circulation and and breathing so airway is always the priority okay so what if the car is going to explode? And that's what I said. If in this situation it says that the car is going to explode, then you have to move the client to a safe location, okay? So you call that process in emergency nursing as extrication, extrication, okay? So um, in our next sections next week, I hope you learned something tonight. Next week, um, we're gonna be discussing more questions probably. And uh, <clears throat> I would like to announce to all of you that in the next few weeks, I'm, go I'm going to have a free NCLEX review webinar as well. Not Facebook Live, but a free NCLEX review uh, webinar is going to be delegation and prioritization. And it's gonna come with a worksheet. So you could come to the session with a worksheet and and master your delegation and prioritization. So that's gonna be a webinar. It's gonna be scheduled in the next few weeks. So watch out for that, everyone. Um, that's going to be for free, okay? For now, for all the students, um, it's uh, very important that when you go to the NCLEX, you really master your 
prioritization and delegation aside from infection control because there's a major topic in the NCLEX. So uh, wait for that announcement. Uh, that's going to be a webinar on delegation and prioritization. So we're going to have a, a conference for that. Okay. So before I end for tonight, just a very quick shout out. Okay. So everyone, thank you very much for joining me. Okay, Maria, Ruella, if you want to learn more about delegation and prioritization, everything is in Facebook uh, and also in uh, in um, in YouTube as well. Join also our Facebook group, which is uh, Matus Nursing Review NCLEX Practice Test and Matus Nursing Review uh, 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 Online NCLEX Academy. Okay, so probably before May 1st, yes, uh, we may have that one before May 1st. Uh, we'll see. We'll make an announcement. Okay, and then... Um, <laughs> yes. So before I end tonight, I just want to share with you something, uh, you know, just uh, an announcement that we have a few courses in our Matus Nursing Review Online NCLEX Academy. We have the eight-day live uh, comprehensive NCLEX review webinar coming this May. We have the 10-week Fast Track Live NCLEX review webinar as well. Uh, check out all of the programs and find out which one meets your needs. Okay. We have also the self-study comprehensive online NCLEX reviews. So, if you're a very busy person and you want to study on your own pace, then uh, you can have the self-study comprehensive online NCLEX review. And when you enroll in our program, monthly subscription, um, you receive a lot of support and a lot of resources. And you will see me, you will, you will hear me, and because uh, that's really very important for me that I keep in touch with my students, especially in Facebook groups, okay? And of course, the NCLEX review comes with a workbook that a lot of students really like. Okay, and lastly, of course, um, this is one of the greatest achievements that I have in the review program, and a lot of students really like this. We have the simple, fast, and easy NCLEX review book that I have at Amazon, and you can see it's all five stars. Students really like that, okay? And also, before I forget, we have a 25% off for all of our online courses for this month and maybe until next next month. So we don't know when it's going to end. So if you have friends that uh, wants to enroll and wants to save money, especially with a COVID situation, then they can enroll in our online NCLEX Academy, okay? And attend some of our other sessions as well. Um, everyone, um, thank you very much for joining me tonight. So we have Melanie, thank you. Pratiksa, Mai Mai, okay. So guys, uh, if you have friends and I schedule this, share this with your friends. Uh, it will benefit them a lot. Share this and um, the next time they can join for free. So, and pass the NCLEX and master the prioritization and delegation. So thank you very much everyone and have a nice night and see you probably next week.